Ja lost it in traffic. And back the other way, three on one. LeBron taking five. Oh! Flight six. Ready for takeoff. Darvin Ham was Mike Budenholzer's assistant in Milwaukee for four years before becoming the Lakers' primary man in charge, and he clearly learned a lot from Coach Bud. To open the game, the Lakers run a playset straight from the 2021 champion Bucks playbook. They utilize a play called Double Fist Screen the Screener, but with multiple innovations. Since this play is from Milwaukee's playbook, instead of the low man setting a screen for his guard, since AD is a much better shooter than Giannis, it's instead the three man in Reeves setting it for the low man, stretch big in Anthony Davis. Austin fulfills his role by screening the screener. Davis fulfills his role by becoming the screener as the DHO man. D'Lo exits to create an illusion. But Coach Hams added an innovation to the playset. After Reeves sets the pin down, he then trails back to receive a flare from Vando. In the dunker spot, AD signals for a lob to create another illusion, and that opens up the lane for LeBron. Letting Autopilot take over at just the right time, the Lakers offense took flight in Game 3 of the Western Conference quarterfinals against the Memphis Grizzlies, and it was a movie. After running into Will Ferrell and suffering a bloody lip, this blockbuster film saw Anthony Davis use that moment as a good luck charm, building off his beastly night from there. Best friends. Yep. This right here, this is AD's perfect somewhere. While Can't Stop by the Red Hot Chili Peppers played with drummer Flea sitting courtside. Can't stop, to the shindig. Next element of the script was AD crashing the backboards whether on the O glass or defensive boards. Whether it was rebounding with abandon, fading away with daggers on the block, or fortifying the bucket, AD had it rolling. I mean, he needs his beauty sleep, right? AD's like, and he wakes up and drops 50. Hitting LeBron with a literal low blow by crossing the line with the hit below the belt. Oh, no way! Right in the Kanyikin! On behalf of my fellow Torontonian, that was sketchy and uncalled for from DB, and I don't mean Doris Burke, that woman did just fine. Fun fact, your boy D-Flow in 2017 was one of 25 students accepted worldwide into Ryerson University's acting program. However, even for my Hollywood standards, the heel in this Laker and Grizzly Saturday Night Flick and Dylan Brooks crossed the line, making this a grungy blockbuster indeed. Given this was a man in Brooks that was just trash-talking Braun before the game, Dylan definitely took the script too far if he didn't think he'd improvised enough already. Coincidentally, the Grizz would instantly go on a monster run without him. A rough night if your name was Dylan. I'm friends with Dylan. Okay, I know what's cool. The always classy Dylan Brooks spoke on his Game 2 confrontation with LeBron back in Tennessee, saying, quote, I don't care. He's old. I poke bears. I don't respect someone until he gives me 40. He's not at the same level that he was when he was on Cleveland winning championships, Miami. I wish I got to see that. It would have been a harder task, but I'm playing with what I've got, end quote. Those last few lines turned out to be cryptic, come to think of it. But Braun would respond a day prior to Saturday's matchup with Tomorrow's gonna be a great game. <laughs> I'm not here for the blue. I'm ready to play, and that's it. To be fair to Dylan, he stayed true to his word regarding his LeBron hate, historically speaking. Brooks has provably always been an LBJ hater, as over a decade ago when James won his first ring in 2012, Dylan would tweet out, It's about damn time, the champion LeBron James. On Saturday, the Toronto native in Brooks would get a slice of karma for being the Skip Bayless cult member that he is. LeBron had an outstanding block on Jaron Jackson Jr., which was evidently all ball. James may not have dropped 40, but his typically loud 25.9 diamond 5 assist showing on 50% shooting from the floor was enough to control the game emphatically for practically minute 1 through 48. Not about the BS, it's not like LeBron dismissed any smoke. In the trailers for the film, the calm before the storm saw the Clipper court get torn to shreds and the Laker court get put together. It was the mere second game ever that both LA teams have played in the same building during a playoff endeavor. While the banged up Clippers would take the L, the Lakers showed up and represented the City of Angels well. All right, Dr. Seuss, okay. 2020's bubble championship, 2021's first round exit, and missing the playoffs in 2022 made this the first playoff game in the LeBron AD era in front of a packed house at Crypto. Overhated on Laker head coach Darvin Ham had a wilt-type performance, 
preaching to his team. Stack possessions. Darwin, don't call him Scam Ham, may not like green eggs and ham, but he did have a fairly solid plan. In addition to preaching to his team and the choir to take it one possession at a time, he won a challenge to reverse a foul call and had his players back in terms of the whistle for the whole night. It was pure domination for the Lake Show early, and I mean that in the truest sense. Midway through the first quarter, the Lakers had not only more than tripled up the Grizz in scoring, Memphis was down 16-2 in paint points at that time, had given up four offensive rebounds, and turned the ball over five times. So, just a brutal start for Brooks and the Grizz. The rim protection of Anthony Davis and funneling pressure of Vando, TBJ, and D'Lo on the perimeter had Memphis rattled early and often. Outside of the insanely loud New York Knit crowd at Madison Square Garden on Friday, the Crip had the best energy and was as loud as any other venue's been all year. Man of the Hour wasn't the WWE-esque heel Dylan Brooks, it was instead Anthony Davis. You? Enjoy your stay. Have a splendid day. Did I tell you who stayed here last week? No, who? AD. I need a Franco stayed here. No, no, Anthony Davis. The brow? Oh. Rui Hachimura, meanwhile, was knocking down spot-up deep-range bombs and taking it coast-to-coast -coast in transition, making it a monster 35-9 first quarter win, almost like they were playing a game of 2K on rookie. The Lakers set the NBA playoff record for the largest lead after the first quarter of all time. While the Grizz were glitching, the Lakers were flowing, dominating the pace of play against the second seed in the West. Through 13 minutes and 24 seconds of action, Memphis had managed a miserable 11 points. LeBron was streaking up the court like his Miami Heat-esque self for ferocious yet acrobatic finishes featuring shockingly nifty finesse from the jump with the legs he was getting on his jumper, you got the feeling it was going to be a 50-piece from Lanier 40-year-old, crazy based off his evident impact that it was only 25 he put up, but an amazing night for King James nonetheless. James is a true icon on and off the court. This guy has never made a mistake, as I've made a history off pointing out, but his poise in response to the trash-talking Dylan Brooks displays the man's calm, cool, and collectedness. He did have to take a hit to LeGroin in the process, but what a class act Le Shannon, I mean LeBron James is. Now two W's from the West semis, fans of the purple and gold have seen their team beat a Morant-fueled Grizzly squad in consecutive games when Jaw's been available. While Morant was amazing down the stretch, how he'll respond to that last fact will be another story. But for LeBron and company, these boys took care of business in convincing fashion. D'Lo and AD would bounce back from a Game 2 showing where they combined to shoot 6 for 25 from the field by collectively posting 48 in Game 3. This has the potential to be the first NBA champion who each have a mutual signature celebration equipped as the D'Lo ice in the veins was shown off by Aust him and then AD on consecutive possessions. Scary part for opponents about this Lakers success is D Loading hasn't even played close to his best self. When D Lo is both keeping his defense right like he has been and keeping the offense flowing, and D Flo's giving him the flowers, the ultimate benefits are what the Lakers will be reaping. At one point, John Morant had scored 22 points in a row, all in the fourth quarter. Credit to 12 for finishing with a 45 piece in his return to the lineup but Morant didn't have much help from Dylan Brooks and company. From start to finish, the game was controlled by the Lakers. Overall, whichever era you can think of, whether it's Shaq and Kobe, Kareem and Magic, Jerry and Wilt, Kobe and Pow, this brawny senior and AD-led 22-23 Lakers squad is starting to resemble a team of that magnitude.